So, YouTube Analytics has been telling me that my audience is only about 6% teenagers, but when I posted a poll, it was six times higher at 37%. Hmm, what's going on here, Susan? What are you hiding from me? Gently tap the like button in order to uncover the truth. With all joking aside, this video is going to be about the best part-time jobs and the highest paying part-time jobs that you can get as a teenager. So people watching this that are in high school or college, this video is going to be for you. Now I'll be honest, a lot of jobs out there are going to suck and they're going to be a huge waste of your time. There is something to be said for having at least one truly sucky job in your lifetime just because of the fact that you're going to know what a crappy job is really like, and so all the jobs you have in the future are gonna be much better. However, if you wanna skip the line, there are a few part-time jobs out there that are S tier. These are part-time jobs that you can do as a teenager that are awesome and you should get one as fast as you can. Now, a few of the jobs that I talk about here are gonna be ones that I've mentioned before, and the reason for that is because they're ones that I've done myself. I have experience with some of these and I've done them myself and I know for a fact that they work. Some of the other ones on the list are ones that I've mentioned before and they're ones that my friends have done. And then there's some on the list that I've I've never mentioned on this channel at all and one of them in particular I was shocked that I never mentioned it I can't believe that I forgot but anyways number 10 on the list is going to be animal walking and animal sitting so the first one is going to be either walking dogs or other types of animals or taking care of them while their owners are out of town so you like being around animals anyways like most people around the world so you might as well get paid to hang out with them why don't you get a job now there's a lot of apps and websites out there that you can do this on like wag rover or care.com generally speaking these are going to pay around 12 to 16 dollars an hour you're going to walk a dog and hang out for it for around 30 minutes to an hour and then you get paid for it you can do this on your break before work on your lunch break it really doesn't take all that long you also get to exercise and spend time outside which is good for your mental and physical health studies have shown that exercising as well as spending time with animals is going to reduce stress which can lead to better health so you get to do all these things that most people choose to do in their free time but you can actually get paid for them so if you're an animal lover the opportunities on this site are going to be amazing it's not just dogs it's not just cats there's all kinds of different animals that you can take care of on this website a lot of the time when people go out of town they're gonna to need you to go into their house and feed their animals while they're gone sometimes they'll even have you take the animal into your house and take care of them while the person is on vacation which usually is gonna pay a little bit better number nine on the list is going to be golf caddy now golf caddies a lot of the time will earn a hundred to two hundred dollars per day and sometimes that doesn't even include tips as a caddy you're gonna be carrying around the balls and the clubs in your bag and then whenever the person needs a particular club you're going to hand it to them. Some caddies like Jordan Spieth's caddy make millions of dollars a year. Now of course if you want to get paid really well as a caddy it helps to know more about golf. You have to actually be a golfer yourself. The reason for this is because you can give them tips on which golf club to use, what techniques to use, what angle they should take in order to get the ball in the hole. You're confusing me. Just let me put the ball in the hole. You're also going to get a good workout doing this. You're going to get to spend a lot of time outside. There's also really good networking opportunities a lot of the people that are going to be golfing are going to be successful. Now you can find work as a caddy by visiting your local golf courses and if you do a really good job they probably won't go full Ellen on you. Now depending on where you live this is a seasonal job and generally speaking you're going to get most of your work in the spring and the summer. Number eight on the list is one that I'm very familiar with. I've done this one a lot and that is going to be tutoring. Now I've tutored on a bunch of different types of subjects but the one that really stands out in my mind is back in college I took this test called the PCAT which is the pharmacy college admissions test. I studied really hard for the test. I did a ton of research figuring out what resources were best in order to get the best score on it and I ended up getting a really good score and so a lot of people wanted to know how I got that score. I started telling my friends how I got it and basically I gave them tips on which stuff to study and what stuff to buy. Then people that I didn't even know started asking my friends for my number and trying to get a hold of me and so I started charging them for my information and for my time. Now I've gone over this before on the channel but long story short I was making over a hundred dollars an hour basically just tutoring people how to study for the test and which resources that they should use in order to study for it. This wasn't something that I was doing all the time. I was probably maybe getting like a few hours a week at most, but still $100 an hour for a college student, that is amazing. Wow. Now when it comes to tutoring, you need to figure out what subjects are going to be able to pay the most. It's also really good if you've taken maybe a national test, for instance, like let's say you're a nurse and you've taken a nursing exam, you can go and tutor people how to pass that nursing exam. I spent a ton of time doing the research on what uh, resources were best for the PCAT and then I spent hundreds of hours studying for it and figuring out what stuff I actually need to know. It was a win-win situation because I was able to save them all that time and all that research and they paid me for my expertise 
expertise. So the best thing you can do here is let's say you scored really well on the ACT or the SAT or some kind of random exam that not that many people have to take. You want to find people that are about to take that exam and then offer yourself as an expert to them and eventually you'll build up enough people, enough people will know about you that you won't even have to go out. People will just try to approach you. This is what happened to me in college and it was awesome. It was a great experience. I had a ton of fun doing it. Number seven on the list is another one that I did back when I was a teenager and I had a truck and that is going to be moving slash hauling. This is an absolutely amazing side hustle that you can do right when you get your license when you're 16. So whenever someone moves to a new place or they get a new couch or they need to get a new washer or anything like that, they need to move whatever that large object is from point A to point B. Now local moving companies are going to charge around $25 per hour per mover and a lot of the time they have a minimum fee. So at the very least they're probably going to charge you a few hundred dollars even if you only have to move a few things. This goes back to basic economics and economies of scale. If you own a moving business you probably don't have time to go take care of the little jobs. Because of this there is a huge need there for people that just have a truck and they're willing to move maybe a couch or a washer or something like that. They're not necessarily trying to move the entire apartment. So this is where you come in if you have a truck yourself which I highly recommend getting a truck especially when you're young. It's super super useful. You can buy an old truck for a few thousand dollars and if you want to really take it to the next level you can get yourself a trailer as well. Then you can go on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, etc. and you just post an ad say hey I have a truck this is how much I charge and people will text you or email you. Now again this is going to be pretty sporadic here and there. It's not going to be something you could do as a full-time job but I remember when I was doing this and I was making pretty good money from it I was making somewhere between 50 and 80 dollars an hour. I know a friend that would make even more than that because he had a trailer I just had a small truck. Number six on the list is going to be babysitting and nannying. So this is one that I've never done before myself, but it can surprisingly be pretty profitable. And depending on the kids that you're working with, it can also be pretty easy as well. Good evening. I am Nanny McPhee. Basically just an evening of watching TV and sometimes even eating free food. Now yes I get it that's not always the case. Some kids are very difficult and they're basically just little nightmares to deal with. You probably don't want to be a nanny for those kids or if you are you want to get paid really well for it. Some parents will pay by the hour and some will pay you for an entire evening. So you might be able to make a hundred bucks when parents want to go out on a date night for a few hours. Now again I can't speak too much about this one because I haven't really done it myself but one downside to this is it's not really something that's going to teach you a lot of skills that you might be able to use in the future. I mean I guess you could argue that it might teach you how to deal with children which might make you a better parent in the future but in terms of actually having a job and making money from that most of the time it's not going to help you. However I have had friends that tell me they charge $15 an hour some of them charge by the night and you know it's relatively easy work as long as the kids aren't little rascals. You basically just go there watch TV for the night some of them even study while the kids are sleeping until the parents get home. Number five on the list is going to be trade work such as construction or roofing. Now this is one I can definitely speak to. I did it a lot when I was younger and out of all the jobs on this list I think it was my second favorite. There's something really oddly satisfying about doing physical labor with your hands. It's just really awesome. It's kind of hard to explain it. Um, you might not know what I'm talking about unless you've actually done it yourself. There was one summer where I did some uh, construction, demolition, and landscaping work in North Carolina. It was the middle of the summer. It was like 100 degrees every day. It was 90% humidity outside. It was absolutely miserable. On top of that I was working somewhere between 10 and 14 hours every single day but it was super weird because I would go to bed every single night just smiling like I was so happy after doing that physical labor all day long. I'd wake up the next morning I'd be ready to do it all over again. It's hard to explain. Um, you kind of just have to try it to see what I'm talking about but there's something really weird about trade careers where you just work with your hands and you're doing physical labor. There's something really weird about it where it's just oddly satisfying. Um, um, it doesn't hurt that you're also getting a workout and so you're going to be in really good shape. Now I made pretty decent money from this. I'd usually make between 10 and $20 an hour. I had a friend who was more into some of the higher paying stuff. He'd been doing it for a lot longer. So he'd do stuff like roofing and all kinds of other stuff that pays better. And he was making over $20 an hour as a teenager. Number four on the list. This is another one that I've done a ton in my life. Um, I've done it both on the internet as well as in real life. And that is going to be flipping slash flipping items online. So 
So this can be an amazing side hustle if you have the cash to buy stuff and then sell it. You do have to have a little bit of cash flow, of course, because you're gonna have to buy stuff and then sell it, as well as having a laptop. So basically, you're going to be buying stuff. You might go to auctions, you might go to swap meets, all kinds of different places. Maybe you'll go to garage sales or if someone has an estate sale where they're, you know, maybe someone passed away and they're just selling all the stuff at their house. There's all kinds of different places that you can go in order to get stuff. And then you just basically go and you swap it, you sell it online. Now, if you're going to do it locally, I recommend using something like Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. I've gone over this in another video. I was much more extensive in that video, but basically you want to make sure that they always come to a place that's near you. If you're going to be doing this all the time, you don't want to be driving like all the way across town. I've had some really bad experiences doing that where I drive all the way across town. We already agreed on a price and then they decide to just out of nowhere, you know, say, oh, I didn't realize this had a uh, scratch on it. Um, you know, I can only pay half now. And then I'm just like, hey, I wasted like 40 minutes of my time. I wasted money on gas, etc. I wasted a bunch of my time. And so sometimes you will actually end up taking their deal. And that's exactly what they wanted you to do. So I always recommend having people come to you, have them come to a place near you, maybe meet at a gas station that's like a block away from your house. The only time I would go to them is if it's a really, really good deal. You want to have an estimated price and then you can negotiate it down a little bit once you get there. But for the most part, if you're not a total asshole, you're not going to go down all that much. You can also sell items online and there's so many different ways that you can do this. Back in the day, I used to use eBay. Another really good one you can use is OfferUp. One example of a really successful just out of the box item that I saw someone make a ton of money from was where they would take different keyboards with really popular laptops or really popular computers and then they'd sell the individual keys. So let's say you accidentally dropped a hammer on your laptop and the uh, H key is all messed up, you know, it's uh, it's shattered and it's not there anymore. You'd probably go on eBay and you would search for, you know, MacBook Pro H key. But a lot of the time these laptops are broken or something along those lines and so they just part them out. A lot of the time you can buy an entire keyboard on a broken laptop for like 20, 30 bucks and then you sell each individual key for somewhere between eight and ten dollars. Now I don't know if this is something that works anymore. This was back in the day. Maybe a ton of people are doing this now but I'm just trying to kind of give you this as an example so you can get the creative juices flowing and think of something along those lines. Other items that I had a lot of success with were going to be iPhones, computers, laptops, bikes, game consoles, a really random one which was perfume, video games, Games. People do this with cars all the time too. They'll buy an old broken down car and then they'll basically just take all the parts out and sell the parts individually. A lot of the time if it's a broken down old car, they can part it out and sell it for three to five times more than it's worth. A big thing here is you want to avoid any items that are in a really competitive niche. So if you see a bunch of really big companies that are doing it, like they're making iPhone cases for instance, I would totally avoid that because there's just no way that you can compete with those bigger companies. Think business smarts, think economics, stick with stuff where it's not profitable enough for the big companies to mass manufacture it. Number three on the list is one I've never mentioned before on this channel, but it's actually really, really good. And that is becoming a waiter or a waitress. This one is excellent, especially if it's a job for a high school student or a college student. Now, depending on the place that you work at, you can make really good money from tips. We're talking like 30 plus dollars an hour sometimes. This is also a great one because it's going to teach you how to communicate and talk with all kinds of different types of people. It'll teach you how to provide really good service. You're going to run into all kinds of different types of people. Like I said, you know, some people will treat you great. Some people will uh, treat you worse than Ellen DeGeneres treats her staff. I honestly think that everyone should have at least one customer service type of job in their life. This will give you a realistic perspective on the types of people that are in the world that you're going to have to deal with your entire life. Most people out there are great. They're awesome people, but you're going to have to deal with people who just want to torment you when you work in customer service. So basically, this will just teach you how to be a better person. I'll leave it at that. Hopefully you see these people that want to torment people and you don't become one of them in the future. Now, some waiter jobs will pay much better than others. So again, as always, it's worth it for you to do your research. Maybe when you're going to a restaurant, just very politely ask the waiter or the waitress if you can just 
ask them a few questions about the restaurant and then you know ask them what you would expect to make if you were a waiter or a waitress there you need to be very respectful about how you ask this because it's kind of weird to just go up to someone and ask them hey how much do you make but you know if they're cool about it and you ask it in a nice way and you're respectful of their time I'm sure they'd be more than happy to assist you now another great thing about this one is you're gonna get most of your hours during the evening hours and the weekend when it comes to restaurants and this is perfect for a college student because you're probably going to be busy during the day taking classes and then you're gonna have time off in the evenings as well as the weekends many friends that have done this have told me that they can make hundreds of dollars a night just on tips alone number two on the list is going to be a salesperson this one is without a doubt my favorite job on the entire list that I did as a part-time job when I was younger I started by assisting one of my dad's friends who owned a business and his sales I'd basically just come along with him and watch him sell and then eventually he invited me to try to sell it myself I didn't get paid for it at first but it was super fun and then after a while I actually asked him if I could do it and get paid to do it sales is one of the most important skills that you could ever learn and it will benefit you no matter what you do in your entire life on top of that you're gonna have a great opportunity to make good money even at a young age now generally speaking there's gonna be three different types of sales jobs that you can have access to at a young age the first one is going to be kind of like a mall sales job so you might be one of those people who work at a kiosk inside of a mall I've done this before I've worked on kiosks inside of malls at different uh, grocery stores all kinds of different places and without a doubt this is one of the funnest jobs that you can do now this is coming from someone who is an introvert this type of job might be very scary to you if you're an introvert but I'm telling you it will help you come out of your shell now you probably know what I'm talking about here I probably don't need to tell you but there might be a kiosk that's selling you facial creams or maybe they're offering to shine your shoes there's all kinds of different types of sales jobs within malls at these kiosks now when you're trying to get a job at one of these places you want to go for ones where people are actually talking to the people that are passing them by you don't want to get a job at one of those kiosks where they're just sitting there waiting for someone to come up that really doesn't teach you very much in the way of sales skills you're more of just a cashier at that point so you're gonna to want to get a sales job where you're actually actually approaching people and talking to people that are walking by now I know a lot of people get annoyed by this but I'm telling you it's going to help you improve your social skills your communication skills it's just gonna help you so much the rest of your life and if none of that convinces you to do it to my audience which is mostly young males yes this will help you in the future to talk to girls so if nothing else do it for that you'll get so many girls numbers that you'll make Ghislaine Maxwell jealous the second type of job that you can do as a teenager that's a sales job is going to be more of a door-to-door -door sales type of job so this is probably the toughest one that you can do on the entire list you're gonna be cold knocking on people's doors in different neighborhoods I've done this one I would say it's my least favorite type of sales okay because a lot of people do not want to talk to you 99% of the time you're probably gonna get rejected you'll likely get cussed out multiple times a day so this is one where you're gonna to have to develop thick skin honestly this one is kind of like sales on steroids so I'm gonna be honest here if you don't have any sales experience whatsoever it's probably going to be tough for you to just jump right in and be good at this you have to realize that sales especially this type of sales is just purely a numbers game if you keep on trying over and over again and you just keep up a positive attitude eventually you will succeed this is one lesson that sales taught me that I've taken pretty much everywhere that I've gone in life for instance on YouTube your first 20 30 videos might only get like 50 views but then eventually one of them is gonna take off and you're gonna be good to go after that the YouTube algorithm will promote your videos a lot more and so you're basically set at that point the third type of sales job that I'm going to talk about that you can do as a teenager is going to be telephone sales now this one doesn't require you to be face to face with people of course so it might be a little bit better for someone who's an introvert to start out with this it's a little bit different than in person but you're still going to learn valuable communication skills and honestly a lot of sales jobs out there right now are telephone sales and especially if you're not in a big metropolitan area that has a lot of malls and that sort of thing this one might be the best one in terms of you having access to it at a young age Age. studies have shown that the number one skill that extremely successful people we're talking about billionaires people who have made like a hundred million dollars the number one job that almost all of them had was a sales job so this is definitely worth your time and even if you don't want to be a millionaire or a billionaire it's gonna help you out in the future one way or another now number one on the list is going to be booth sales now this one is still a sales job technically but the reason I kept it separate was because of the fact that I was actually able to go from having a job to being someone who is 
basically self-employed as a teenager. So I did start working in sales by working for someone else. They taught me everything. I'm super grateful for them for teaching all those skills to me. Now, eventually we moved away from this person and I still wanted to do the sales job, but unfortunately I couldn't really help them out as much. And so I started selling stuff on my own. So I would go to flea markets, swap meets, malls, all kinds of different shows, boat shows, health shows, just anything that you can think of that has a ton of people going there. Sometimes I would go to fairs, for instance, and I would sell set up a booth and I would start selling. So one example of something I sold that I had a lot of success with was eyeglass cleaner. And this was basically a type of eyeglass cleaner that would make it to where your glasses don't fog up in the winter time and they don't condensate or, you know, get muggy in the summer. So what I would do is I would see people at the fair or wherever I was at and I would look for people who are wearing glasses. And then I would hold my hand out to them and I would say, hi, sir, can I clean your glasses for you? Now, a lot of the time they would be like, no, thank you, I'm good. But a good amount of the time they'd be like, sure, I'll let you clean my glasses for me. I haven't cleaned these in weeks. So what I would do is I would uh, start cleaning their glasses and I would start pitching to them. I would tell them all about why this is such a special product and blah, 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 blah. And then I had a vaporizer that was on the table that would be shooting out steam. I would clean one side of their glasses and I would leave the other one uncleaned and then I would put it over the vaporizer and I would show them that the side that I just cleaned doesn't get fogged up and the other side does. If they didn't buy, I would just leave them uncleaned. Just kidding. Of course, I would always clean the other side of the glasses even if they didn't buy. But then I would tell them all about the product. I would pitch the product to them. I would also sell a uh, cleaning cloth as well along with it. This was a killer product. I would have huge days selling this. This is one of those products that doesn't really sell all that well on its own. I mean, we are in a pandemic right now where we all have to wear masks. And so a lot of people are probably buying this product right now. So <clears throat> this might be a good one for you to do. But it's one of those products where it has to be demonstrated in order to show people how it works. So if it's just on a shelf and it says anti-fog eyeglass cleaner, no one's going to want to buy it. However, when you demonstrate it, when you show people what it does, and these are people who all the time probably have issues with their glasses fogging up, people tend to want to buy it. Even if they don't buy it themselves, a lot of the time they'll end up buying it for someone else. Now, depending on the show, depending on, you know, what kind of promotion I was doing, very generally speaking, because sometimes I would sell them in bundles, for instance, I would buy them for a couple bucks and then I'd sell them for around $10 each. Now, sometimes I'd go to a show, it would be really slow. So I'd go around to other booths and I'd talk to salesmen and I'd ask them like, hey, what are your hot products? Which products are selling really well? I would think about it. And if it was a product that made sense to sell along with the eyeglass cleaner, I would look it up online and sometimes I would start selling those products as well. So for instance, one example of a product that did really well back in the day, probably won't sell very well now, but it was basically a credit card knife. Okay, so it looked like a credit card card, you could put it in your wallet very easily, but when you folded it up, it would turn into a little knife. There's a little knife you could use to cut apples or, you know, whatever you need to do with it. Very, very useful. I would buy them off of Alibaba for pretty much nothing. I'd buy hundreds of them at a time for like 25 cents each, and then I'd sell them $7 for one knife or $10 for two. So that's just an example of a few products that I would sell, but basically I had really, really good days doing this. I would have like $880 days, and then I'd have, you know, $1,000 weekend. This is something that is pretty good for a college student as well, because generally speaking, these events would only happen on the weekends or sometimes they would happen like later at night when everybody's off. Go ahead, gently tap the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. And don't forget to check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you.